Hello, friends, and, and thank you for joining us again. This is the final uh, speaker series presentation of the academic year. Uh, this has been our pilot year, so we've, we've, we've tried a few uh, situations where we're presenting with experts to our uh, employees, so our staff and our coaches and our administration. And also some of our uh, focus has been on student athletes. Uh, sometimes it's the same. And that's what today is. So today, uh, the topic is what happens for our student athletes when their playing days come to a close, right? It's kind of heavy. So, so a lot of their experience, uh, a lot of their identity has been with their sport. And there comes a time where uh, they have to say, all right, those playing days are behind me. There's a chance that they can keep playing and keep their career going, which is outstanding. Uh, but sometimes you just have to say, all right, uh, now I'm going to transition. And our friends at Prevention Strategies are, are outstanding. Uh, uh, Shane Stadler, uh, Dr. Milroy, uh, Kristen Rustbolt. So we, we, we have some friends who are experts at uh, addressing student athlete concerns that are, are bigger than what happens on the court and, and what happens on the field. And, and that's kind of where this group comes in tonight is to say, all right, uh, let's get you ready. All right, this is going to be kind of, kind of delicate, kind of heavy. Uh, we're going to talk to you about some things that you're going to face because there's a, there's a transition going on in your life. Kind of like when you, when, you, when you came from high school and you started college, there were some, some things that were quite a bit different and quite a bit heavy. And, and you might need someone to kind of help you through that period of your life. That's what this is. So again, uh, this is not going to be a lot of, of, of NAIA talk. It's going to be a lot from our experts. Uh, uh, and I am going to, as we speak, I'm going to fumble through uh, a PowerPoint here. And I'm going to show you who our experts are. So here we go. UNC Greensboro, North, North Carolina Greensboro, the Institute to Promote Athlete Health and Wellness it, it's, it's outstanding. If you get time, go ahead after this session and, and go to their website and see what all they're about. It's outstanding. Uh, Dr. Jeff Milroy is with us. And then from the athletic side, so someone who is in the middle of this world, someone who works in a, 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 a campus that deals with student athletes, uh, Kristen Russell is with us. So they're going to give you a little bit of perspective about what they do in their line of work to help student athletes when this time comes in their life. Uh, also, just so you know, someone else who is with us is Shane Stadler. He's been wonderful for me in the, in the two years I've been with the NAIA, helping me through the, the uh, online version of, of student athlete education. And again, at the end of this, you're gonna see prevention strategies. They're going to talk to you a lot about uh, different resources that are available if you if you connect with them one on one afterwards. So uh, that's enough from us from the NAI, and we're going to completely turn it over to to Dr. Milroy and Kristen. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat in case there's any questions, uh, and then when the time comes, we're gonna we're gonna ask our two guests to to enlighten us a little bit more if they don't already cover what we're thinking. So again, uh, Kristen, thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Milroy, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to stop sharing and give you the screen. So awesome. thank you very much. Awesome, and thanks. That's, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna switch us over here too to get us to something that we can work with here. So thank you so much, Robert, uh, for those uh, the kind words to get us rolling here. Um, and I'll quickly say thanks to Kristen. Kristen and I are good friends. Um, so we get to see each other quite a bit, but it's so awesome to be able to present with her. And Kristen, once I kind of do the shift over to you, uh, you know, I can't do it justice in terms of introducing you. So um, <laughs> you make sure everybody knows exactly everything that you, you've done and, and the career that you've had thus far. Um, my name is uh, Jeff Milroy. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Public Health Education at UNC Greensboro. I'm also a uh, director, and that's just, it's, it's newly appointed position as director of and we changed uh, the name, and I should have let you know that earlier, Robert, um, for, you know, various higher education rules and things like that. We are now the Center for Athlete Wellbeing, doing the same stuff, working on the same things, 
Um, we do a lot of work across the board in terms of athlete well-being, whether it comes from, you know, the coaches that serve the athletes, working on uh, programs and education for athletes around care-seeking behaviors, whether it's related to mental health or uh, concussion uh, care-seeking. Um, so we do, we do quite a bit in that, in that area, of course, and doing a lot of research in that area. And so um, as Robert alluded to, we're going to talk about uh, an interesting time in our lives. And I say our lives. Um, I'm a former student athlete. I was a, a D3 hockey player, originally Canadian. So you'll hear the, the out and abouts um, come out in this presentation a little bit. Um, and, and so I kind of had that perspective. I'm, I'm well removed from that, certainly. Um, but I, I highlighted two words on this, this, this first slide here, and it's college competition. Um, because I still play hockey on Wednesday nights and I still compete and I still see myself as an athlete. And um, that is related to what uh, Robert was talking earlier about is this idea of this identity uh, and, who, and who we are. And, and I know Kristen will be able to speak to that as well. And I know for folks that are listening in and watching right now, or for folks that are, are, are listening and watching when they see the recording, is they, they're going to have similar experiences. And truth be told, even if you're not an athlete, you experience transition in your life. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So the big piece here, um, and I'm going to kind of give us that, that foundation. I really truly believe that the heart of this presentation is going to be in what, what Kristen brings to us and her expertise um, and some of the conversation we can have around that. But I want to give you the kind of that, that background to, as to why we're talking about it. Identity is such an important uh, thing for each and every one of us. And some of us have you know, multiple identities, if you will, but there's some that, that really emerge. And for our athletes, a lot of that is around being an athlete and what that's meant because of the time that we've spent um, to that sport and competing from such a young age to multiple sports, to, to traveling for multiple sports, then to maybe honing in on one or two sports. Um, and identity is something that helps us to establish our character, right? So this idea of who do I think that I am? And a lot of times that's driven from the, the, the teammate that we are, uh, the person that we're on the, the, that we are on the field or the court. Um, I'll probably use multiple anecdotes today, but um, even though I only played soccer until I was about 12 or 13, I'm now like in the thralls of coaching soccer for multiple kids. Um, and I see these things in my, my six-year-old son or my nine and 11 year old daughter that this, this character that comes out in the field or other kids on the field. Um, and it, and it guides us. So this identity of that sport guides us of, of who we are and our character, but also provides us with this moral guidance. What we see is fairness, right? We, there are rules and policies at, around the sports that we play. Um, and it got, it guides that kind of our, um, internal moral, as to what's right and what's wrong, how we treat others, regardless of competition, regardless of what's going on. It helps us socially, right? I, I can't tell you how much, uh, you know, as I was growing up and in my college years, that's that was my friend group. My friend group was the team. Certainly I had friends that were outside of that. A lot of those friends were athletes too, because they understood the commitment. They understood the time that it takes. Um, and, 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 and it just kind of made sense. Um, also, this identity, whether it's embedded within being an athlete or maybe being a student or a little bit of both, guides our needs and our wants. So we have these, these goals that we set for ourselves and these objectives that we set for ourselves um, with and without others. So independently, I say, I want to do X, Y, Z, or I work with my coach, and this is the goal that I set myself athletically. So it allows us a sense um, or to at least experience some ac accomplishment, even if, say, the goal, the, there's several goals that we have and we don't meet them all, but there we are kind of working our way towards that ultimate goal, whether it's win championship or a record or what have you, is that we have these other successes along the way. It also serves as our guardrails, right? This identity. Um, so if we think about someone who's really committed to their sport and they have options to go out on a Thursday night or a Friday night or a Saturday night. Our athlete identity says to us or, or speaks to us in a way that our guard role is, okay, I can make that choice, but there are certain consequences that come with that. Um, or it might be related to academics, that we know that uh, academics are uh, in, entirely important, uh, keeping eligibility, right? Um, and that those guardrails keep us into kind of that lane that says, if I'm committed to this, uh, and this is who I am, and I believe that it's who I am, that these are the decisions that I'm going to make because of that. So what happens 
when this identity shifts, right? I mentioned earlier that uh, we're speaking about athlete identity today, but there's lots of different identities and there's lots of different identities we're all going to experience in our life. I have had several shifts in my life, whether it's from athlete to graduate student, then became an identity um, as, you know, husband or father, right? That there's lots of different um, identities that we are going to, that are kind of going to emerge top to the top for us. But what happens when these identity shifts? Um, does it, does it change who we are? Like, right? Like does just because I'm no, com- no longer competing as a college athlete, does that take away those years? Does it change the person that I am? Does it change the character that I have established and built through sport? Um, does the shift force us to be someone that we don't want to be, right? Which, which um, is, is really, really deep when we think about that, right? We're no longer the college athlete, college athletic competitor. So then it's now forcing us to be somebody that we're not used to. Is it a bad thing? Is the, is the transition, is this identity shift a bad thing? Because sometimes it can feel that way because maybe it's not what we want. So, you know, the example I think that's at the forefront of our conversation right now is graduation, which is such an amazing thing. But we might also think about injury or we might also think about relationships that we have and transitioning in and out of relationships. And that, that can feel really, really difficult. Um, so is it, a bad, is it a bad thing? And then a lot of times I remember myself, I remember asking myself or, or, or as I, I talked to some of my, my teammates who had career ending injuries, is it what was needed, right? These are, these are all huge and multi-layered questions that we can ask ourselves here. Um, and, and unfortunately, it's kind of like a maybe to all of these, right? I mean, that's the truth. Like, does it change who we are? Maybe. Does it force us a little bit to be somebody that we don't want to be? Maybe, maybe it's just somebody else. Is it a bad thing? Maybe in the moment it is, right? Is it what we need? You know, deep breath, maybe, right? And that's what kind of, uh, you know, part of my French here, but that's what kind of sucks about it a little bit is that these challenges come with maybes and unknowns. Um, and one of the, the, the really kind of, um, kind of top statements that comes out of public health education i'm sure it comes it's used elsewhere but it's like it depends right i mean the maybe comes with the independent it depends and it depends what we do with it because we know and we're actually scared that there's changes ahead of us right so what did we have in college life and i and i i, I actually highlight this word later i think we like the royal we right because uh, even though i'm far removed from college athletics i'm still in the throes of it in terms of the research and the work that i'm doing and working with Uh, awesome folks like Robert and NAIA is that in college life, we had structured environment, especially if you're athlete, right? You know, the good and the bad of it, right? There was the structured environment. We had a family like social network. We knew that we had teammates and or other athletes within, within athletics that we could rely on, right? We had moments that we were able to set goals and achieve those goals, but not only achieve them, but we were given resources and the supports to accomplish them, right? Which is really, really a big, which is a really big difference. And and when I talk on the right side here, this column, I'll I'll, I'll highlight that for us. We had required physical activity, no matter how tired we were. And I, you know, Kristen will talk about being a swimmer, you know, those early, early mornings, fortunately us hockey players, we, we were like, you know, later in the afternoon practices, we didn't have too many early mornings, unless, unless actually you're me and I could never do the five minute mile. And I had to wake up because everybody who couldn't make the five minute mile had to run in the mornings, but not that I'm holding on to that, but then we had we had we had this required physical activity. But then we also, in some cases, had this prescribed nutritional intake. Now I can tell you that mine was definitely not prescribed from a, 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 an expert because they probably would have been telling me to eat a whole lot of different things than I was. But I was able to eat a lot of the things that I I have to avoid nowadays, or at least the amount of it, right? Because of the energy that we were, we were burning as an athlete. So that's college life. So post college life, we have a little bit more freedom. Freedom is always this idea of like, you know, freedom is such a powerful word. Freedom, freedom to be me, the autonomy to make my own decisions. But it's also like, holy smokes, I, I'm, I got to do this on my own. And I know not everybody can, can uh, relate to this, this kind of next antidote, but I remember feeling this way when I brought my first daughter home from the hospital. It was like we were in there, we were following their schedule, they were checking in on us, they were keeping us up. You know, we, we kind of wanted to leave, but we didn't want to leave. And then it was the day we had to leave. And, you know, I, I, I've got her in a car seat and I put her in the car 
And I looked at my wife and I was like, they're really going to let us leave with her. And they're going to expect us to keep her alive. Like, whoa, right? Freedom is kind of scary, right? Um, so this post-college life, we might have a different social network. Our social network at school were, our, were our, the athlete, our athlete friends, our teammates. And it was there for us no matter kind of what, right? But we go home and now we're far away from our friends. Maybe we're only able to talk to them on the phone or text or whatever. And I still have those friends and they're great friends, but my social network is not the same as it was then. Setting different goals on my own, on our own, on your own, without some of the supports and resources to help us get to achieving those goals. Okay, and then let's, I mean, we got to put it out there, physical activity, relationship with food and mental health. All of these things that we kind of, you know, had different relationship with as a college athlete, right? And we're transitioning to figure out what am I supposed to do when I have this freedom? I still love to be physically active. Do I need to go like grind it out five days in a row as a post-collegiate athlete? Technically, no, right? Our relationship with food in college as an athlete, it was about energy, it was about recovery. It was about the, the sport, right? Being a competitor. Um, when we're outside of that environment, we're not, you know, consuming the same amount of calories. We're not consuming calories for the same reasons. So our relationship with food is very different. From a mental health standpoint, a lot of times we had those supports and the resources there for us as a collegiate athlete, but then we go out and we're pseudo, pseudo on our own, right? We might still have some of those supports or maybe we still do see a counselor, right? And we have that those resources around, but it's, it's just a little bit different. And one of the big things about this transition um, out of college athletics and a colleague of mine, Dr. Aaron Reifsteck at UNC Greensboro has done a lot of research in this area is that those big shifts, especially for a college athlete, uh, uh, in particular related to physical activity and dietary intake, is that, that, that such a spike drop off in that we see a lot of college athletes really take a break and not only take a break, but they don't become as physically active as, as they were before, certainly, but then even drop below some of the national standards, um, which is really interesting. And it has some implications, cardiovascular speaking, all that sort of thing. So, you know, again, speaking about this idea of identity, knowing that changes are ahead, that there's such a difference between the college life and the post-college life, it just really does introduce quite a bit of fear. So I think, the, you know, the direction that we're going to go here, um, and, and I, I'm going to quickly transition, I want to transition over to Kristen, um, is I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what can some of the athletes who are listening right now, or as this gets shared broadly, what can they think about, but then also institutionally, what can we be doing both before and after that transition for the athletes? So for the athletes, a really important aspect of this is being conscious of the shift. And, and all of these bullets here, I don't think are just relevant to transitioning from a college athlete to a quote unquote non-college athlete, right? Because you're going to still have that athlete identity. It's part of who you are. It's part of who you've always been. You're probably always going to be a competitor, right? Um, depending on the sport, you may be able to continue competing in that sport at a variety of different levels post-college. But if we can just be conscious of that shift and understand that that shift is happening, that can then help us to reflect on how our previous behaviors were. So thinking about physical activity and nutrition or who we went to for social support, right? How those things can change. Um, and same thing with our beliefs. What were our beliefs or our attitudes around physical activity? Right? Was it just because we had to? Or should we think about, you know, physical activity that maybe we like rather than we just had to do, right? So that's a lot of uh, the, the stuff that Dr. Aaron Reifstick talks about in a program called Moving On, Moving On which we'll get to in a little bit is identifying you know, different types of physical activity that maybe you weren't able to do before and start generating that intrinsic motivation around that activity. If we can reflect on those previous behaviors, beliefs, and attitudes, then we can actually start to purposely seek or, and or develop the things that helped you be successful before, right? So why did you start the sport that you, you competed in for so long? Because you loved it, right? And, and, and you, you, you grinded it out and you were successful and you did the things that you needed to do for that sport, so now we can start to redefine the relationship you have with that physical, physical activity and food. And we can say, hey, I want to do something because I love it. I want to try a new, I want to try a new sport. 
right? Don't get me going on pickleball. I'm like a, I'm a big peckler now. I mean, Kristen's laughing at me because I talk about it all the time, but like, that's, that's my thing right now. Like I really want to, and, and if I was still the college athlete, I wouldn't be able to really explore that as much as I am right now. Right. So, um, so we, it gives us a, a sense and a chance to be able to redefine the way that we're thinking about these things that were so structured before in our life. So, um, as we think about what we, the Royal, we can do to support athletes before and after the transition, um, I want to shift it over to Kristen and, and Kristen, again, just to remind you, please let the folks know who you are, um, you know, your experiences, that sort of thing, and, and walk us through um, some of the things that we might be able to start doing for our athletes right now. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Jeff. I was listening to you thinking, man, as a 21 year old, I really would have liked hearing somebody tell me all of these things. <laughs> Would, I, would we have listened? I don't know. Yeah, maybe I don't know if we would have listened, but I really, I was like, yeah, that, that would have been nice to, to think yeah, about. I hear you. Um, which I'll tell a story that kind of relates to that. So Kristen Rustbold, I'm the Associate Athletic Director at UNC Greensboro um, over academic student athlete development and diversity and intercultural engagement and all those other duties as assigned. Um, I was a collegiate division one swimmer. Um, I went to Western Kentucky University. So um, I did do lots and lots of mornings. I did two a days, three a days. Um, I was uh, what I like to call an athlete student a lot of the time. I lived and breathed my sport and, um, and, and school came pretty easy to me. So that was great for me. That was an easy thing. So that idea of identity really, really resonates with me because I was somebody who really identified as a swimmer and only a swimmer. And that really, it made it really hard for me those first couple of years out of, out of school to figure out kind of where my life was headed. Um, and so one of those things that I always think about, and one of the reasons I actually got into this job um, was because I didn't really have anybody to turn to. I didn't have anybody in an athletic department or anybody that had an interest in me outside of just my sport on campus. and I was really lost and I didn't, I knew I wanted to go to graduate school, but I didn't really even know how to apply. There's these basic things that your parents or your guardians or whoever you're with helped you through high school or your counselors. And then you get to college and you talked about that transition and freedom when you go from college to the real world, um, which we don't, I don't like to call it the real world because man, you are living in the real world in college. I, I promise you that. But you know, that transition, I had help before and I didn't feel like I had help again. And so that was one of the things that got me into this, into this role is I wanted to be a person that could help that transition, could help other student athletes figure out that there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you are more than just your sport, but that because you are an athlete, man, you've got a lot to give this world. And that is something that's really, really great. So so that's kind of my story. I went to graduate school and um, I worked in the athletic department and I just kind of loved what I was doing. And um, so now I've been at UNCG for about six years. And in my role, um, you know, Jeff is somebody who lives and breathes that research side and it's awesome. And there's so much that as practitioners of what we do is really important to have that research behind us. And it's something that we haven't done a great job of. I think in the last you know, 10 years, probably we have really come a long way in, in having research that backs up why we do what we do and why it's important. Um, and so you know, at, at UNCG, I, I'm in the middle of it. And it's with, those, with the student athletes that I work with, um, there are things that we have to do on a daily basis to support those students um, between community engagement, professional development, their academic uh, career, and then that transition out and making sure that they are finding whatever that next right thing is for them. Um, so some of the things I'm going to talk about, um, you know, I'm going to go through kind of just ways that I help engage our students. And then I'm going to go through ways that um, I specifically ask our students to engage with us. And I think that's going to kind of shape a few things that we can talk through. Um, and again, this is something that Every, every institution is different. Every sport is different. How you operate in your, in your team now might be how you want to operate in your future career. And so those are things you, you always got to think about. Um, but one of the things, especially with practitioners and especially some, something I do, is I really like to figure out what identities student athletes have outside of their sport. Is it something that they, do they have other talents? Do they have other 
um, passions that drive them outside of just their sport. And as somebody who works with a student athlete every day, I have that ability to kind of talk through those things with them and figure it out and celebrate those things. One of the things I don't think we do enough of in, in our lives with each other as student athletes, as teammates, as colleagues, is I don't think we celebrate each other enough. And I think if we were able to celebrate those little things that we do, um, it shows that it's not just, you aren't just your sport. And so that identity, um, while it's important and it's something that's driving you every day, especially as a swimmer to wake up at 5.30 in the morning every day, it's not everything you are because you have these other identities. And then it allows you, and, and Jeff mentioned, you know, he's a father, he's a husband, he's a um, professional, all of these things, you get to see those more clearly when you kind of I, identify that you have things outside of your sport. So the ways that you can do that, and that's kind of, I think, where student athletes kind of get stuck sometimes is, well, I don't, that's all I do is all I do is think about my sport. And, and one of the things you can do is think about the community engagement you're involved in or the community engagement that you are setting up for your student athletes. And how does that affect you? What are the things that they, that they get out of that? And are there passions that come from that? I have student athletes that come to me and ask to do community engagement, specific community engagement. And I've seen those student athletes put, like go and work for those companies later on. Um, you know, those are things that you, when you are giving back to your community, that's the thing we preach a lot is like, be good stewards of your community. When you are helping other people, you're gonna find what's driving you outside of that sport. The great thing is, is being a student athlete is you get those opportunities to be in the community because young people, businesses, they wanna be around you because of what you do and what you bring to the table. They know that student athletes have great uh, determination. They work well on a team. They have all these really great qualities and that transitions so well into the workforce and you get those experiences through engaging in those people and, and those opportunities around you. Um, and so, uh, and Melissa, I see your question and I'll, we'll talk through that and definitely in a second. So, you know, the other part of those identities outside your sport is we, you all have to have a major. You're all gonna graduate where we are helping student athletes get through those four to five years um, and maybe with COVID, you can stay in college forever, I feel like. Um, but you, you, you get those major interests. So using those to figure out what internships you can get, those other identities that you can grasp onto, that's the best part of, you know, really how we can identify things outside of what we do um, in just our sport. Um, and Melissa, you mentioned how do we engage our coaches and how do we involve the coaches my personal opinion is th these coaches, they, our coaches know the most about our student athletes. They are with them day in and day out and they care. The best part about being a coach is you get to know these uh, men and women on a, on a level that a lot of people don't. And keeping coaches engaged of conversations that you have with student athletes that trigger something else that you can say, hey, did you know, um, did you know that this student like loves to draw? We figured out in a meeting I had with a student athlete, she was doodling and I said, hey, that's a really good drawing. And she goes, oh yeah, I, I, I used to paint a lot and I used to do all these different, um, these different drawings in high school. And since I've been here, I haven't really done it uh, much. Come to find out this young lady was going through a lot of like mental health struggles that note she wasn't talking about. And some of that outlet came from doing these drawings. And so I went to her coach and I said, did you know she's so good at drawing? Like, this is amazing. She could do some cool t-shirt designs for us or she could do things. And she started drawing again. And the coach basically pulled her and said, hey, come draw something for me. I'm gonna put it up in my office. And that helped in even not just in knowing her other identities, but it also helped in her mental health transition while she was in college. Hey, Kristen, can I jump in for a second there? Too? Yeah, for sure. I think I think that's such a great point that you make, uh, especially with the coaches knowing a lot about their their athletes. Um, one of the things that that we have done in the past when we've worked with coaches is that we've tried to equip them with some different communication skills. Um, and those communi communication skills um, are related to a field uh, or, or, or skill set, if you will, or actually certification called motivational interviewing. And what we've tried to equip our coaches with, that we've worked with in the past, 
um, are providing them with strategies to elicit more information from their athletes. So yes, you're right. They, they know their athletes a lot um, and they're with them a lot. Um, and they serve in that parental role in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but there's some really awesome skills like open-ended questions um, or those kind of awkward pauses that allow the other individual, the athlete in this case, to actually, actually express more than maybe they normally would. And so our, we, we've really found some success with our coaches who, um, yes, have conversations with their athletes about things that are related to sport, but then also have really amazing conversations that are outside of sport, asking about their interests. Uh, this is a per, like example that you used about, you know, the the art background, right? And, and it being connected to the, the young athlete's mental health is just like icing on the cake, right? Like that's the, the, the benefit, the bonus there. Right. Um, but there are so many athletes that just have so many other interests and for coaches to know these things and ask about these things, just it gives the athletes such a sense of, um, I don't know what the right word is, but just like, oh, my coach cares. They're, they're, they're interested mm -hmm. in not, not just me remembering playbook, but I'm also asking about me as a human being and, and about my personal interests. And that's just such an awesome thing. So I, I just wanted to jump in and, and, and say that I appreciate you using that as the example mm -hmm. and, and coaches being able to, to um, be that outlet for the athletes in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think, you know, whatever role anybody plays in the athletic department or even professors on campus that when, when you see things that, that you can help identify students outside of just their sport and celebrate that, it, it goes a long way. I mean, our, our students, I mean, everybody knows social media is king, right? This is all we do is like, like, like all day long. And there's a certain satisfaction that you get those likes from, but when you get a like in person, I, that's huge, right? That, that goes a lot, a lot longer. And it means a lot more to, to young people and to adults, right? These are things that we can do on a daily basis. As you see, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times we've um, found out something about a student athlete. And then let's say they are a musician and we'll ask them to either come sing or play the guitar at our end of the year banquets. Something that just shows the multi-talented piece of it, I think is just such a cool thing um, because we all have other talents. Um, I happen to know all the things about Disney World. That is my other talent besides swimming. Um, but you know, those are the things like we just figure out what those things are and we can help our students figure those things out. Kristen, I'm so happy you brought up Disney and I'm going, I'm going a little off script here because as I was driving home from the mountains today, I thought about, and, and this is because I have four kids under the age of 11 mm -hmm. that I know the movie Encanto, 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 see, they make fun of me anyways, but yep. so one of the songs and one of the, the biggest the messages from the movie is that you're more than your gift, yes. right? And you literally yes. just went there right now and then brought up Disney too. So that's, yes, that's, you are that's, more than your gift. That is uh, double, okay. double cheesy for sure. But I mean, it's the truth. But. <laughs> I love it. That's so great. So the other things we can do, I think, you know, we think a lot, I can't, I can't tell you how many student athletes have come into my office freaking out senior year, second semester senior year going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Um, and I get that because I was that person too. Like that was, I had ended, swimming season ends in February and I had two and a half months to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Um, not enough time really to, to make good decisions. <laughs> Uh, for the rest of your life in two and a half months. Um, the other thing that I like to tell student athletes is your next step doesn't have to be the forever next step. It's just the next right step. Like what's the next right thing you can do to get you moving towards whatever it is that's gonna become your next passion. Thankfully, I'm very lucky because my next passion kept me in college athletics. Um, that can happen for a lot of people. And those are the things where if, if somebody so truly identifies in their sport, there's ways to use that passion and continue going through those things. As professionals, as practitioners of this field, you know what we can do is, is set up programming to figure out what those passions are. And sometimes that programming doesn't have to take, you know, we don't have to move mountains to do it. You have enough professionals on your campus that can come to a panel on here are the different you know, avenues of how I got to where I am. Um, I think that that young people, college age people relate the best to people that they can see themselves in. So that's really important to think about diverse backgrounds, about diverse jobs, 
about, you know, having them be able to see themselves in somebody else. And they resonate so well with that. And they resonate what those people say back to them. So young alumni are awesome. Donors that have a passion for something where they can see maybe one of their, you know, see the younger version of themselves in those. Those are great ways that student athletes can figure out kind of how um, they can start to develop what their career, future careers, future passions, future, you know, things that they're going to get involved in. Those are things that they can do. And then the best part, I think, to me, to helping student athletes is to listen and have conversation. Have an open door policy that allows your student athletes to come in, whether you're the athletic director, you're the coach, you are somebody who is a GA sitting at a desk for the first time trying to figure out the world too. Having open-ended conversations with your student athletes about what they're looking for, what they're afraid of. It's, it's, you, you, you said the, um, you said the idea of those open-ended questions for coaches that works for all of us, man. If you are able to find ways to get people talking, we do this fun thing in our office where we have one of our counselors, our academic coaches does a question a week and everybody comes in to figure out what the question is. And it just starts conversations. And sometimes they're really basic questions and sometimes they're really deep questions. And we get to learn about our student athletes through that. We get to learn about why they might've answered one way or the other. And basically we do that to start those conversations. And then if we, if we think about, we hear something that triggers, oh, I really, let's go tell Kristen this. And this, this academic coach and the student athlete run to my office and say, hey, Kristen, this is what this person said. Isn't this so amazing? And again, we're celebrating the fact that they're thinking and, and going through things. And it shows that we care. Uh, one of the things we do really well at UNCG, our dean of students office um, has, has kind of created this idea of the culture of care. And it, it stems down to everything we do. And I think that's one of the best things you can do is show up for your student athletes. And student athletes, feel free to walk into those people's offices that you know care about you and say all the things, tell them all the things, feel all the feels. Going through that transition between you know, junior and senior year to what life looks like after sport is hard and it's challenging, but there are so many people around you that have been there and done that and can give some sort of advice, even though it's your own it's your own process that you have to go through. Um, and I think the other thing, and we'll talk about moving on last, because um, I, I have some really awesome things to say about that, and we've, we've utilized moving on. Um, but the other thing I think is helping student athletes network. A lot of the times nowadays you have to, it's unfortunate, but you have to have 1800 internships, you have to have a graduate assistantship, you have to have all these extra things that you didn't have to have when we were growing up to get your first job. Um, and so how do we navigate through that when you don't have time as a student athlete to do all those extra things because you're dedicating your time to your athletics? That comes through networking. You have a network, whether you know it or not, of former alumni that have been in your shoes, of people in your athletic department that can help you get in front of the right people and maybe skip a couple of those steps. And that's the great thing is because you were an athlete, you have all of these things that it takes a lot of other people longer to figure out teamwork. Uh, you, take, um, you take criticism and you take uh, ways to get better. When people come to you, when bosses come to you and say, hey, this was great, but I really need you to work on this. You can make shifts in what you do so much faster than the normal person because that's what good athletes are taught. And you know, you're coachable. There are so many things. And as professionals, we know these things about our student athletes. The thing is, is they don't always know how to talk about themselves. And so they don't know that I like that they can go into an interview or they can go into an internship and say, I'm really good at this because this one time on my team, uh, we had a disagreement and we were able to sit down and talk it out in a way that was uh, that made our team better. And we ended up winning the championship that year. There's things that you know you can help your student athletes figure out. Um, but then also get them in front of those people that can help grow their network so they're ready to do all of the things that, um, that they want to do afterwards. Um, the one thing I didn't put on here is, and it kind of goes back to that identity and that passion, is you don't have to have it all figured out. And we should not expect our student athletes to have it all figured out right away. We just shouldn't. It's the fact that we 
try to tell somebody they have to figure out the rest of their life when they're 18 and choose a major is hard enough. And then four years later, we're like, okay, now tell me what you want for the next five to 10 years. That's tough. And so you don't have to figure it out. Um, I'll give you a personal example. I, um, so I was a swimmer. I was so glad to sleep in finally after I was done swimming. I miss it every single day of my life. Um, I hated any land sport. I needed water around me. Any land sport was bad. If I, um, I tried to run in college and it was terrible, worthless. Oh my gosh, I would have rather done nothing. Now, 10, fast forward 10 years after I, well, not I've been out of college longer than 10 years, but about 10 years after college, I started getting into running like for real. And that is my thing now. That is part of my identity. So not only do I have this identity of a swimmer, I have identity as a mom, a professional. I also now get this identity of I'm a runner. Like that's a thing I do. And it's so, it took me a long time to get there. Hey, Kristen, I got a question for you. Yeah. So you did, you, you talked a lot about that career guidance um, from somewhat of an internal to athletics um, standpoint. How much do you all at UNCG or your colleagues at other universities um, interact or utilize kind of the career services within the institution as well? Tons. Okay. Tons. I mean, that is the best part is every campus has some sort of career services office and we partner with them all the time. We send them over when you're a one man shop, like I was at a bunch of places, I could, I could meet with some student athletes and review, review resumes, but I couldn't meet with all of them. Sure. And so using the people on campus that are, first of all, this is what they do. They wake up to do this every day, right. but then they're, they know what everybody's looking for in different things. So utilizing your on-campus partners is huge and developing those relationships. So it becomes easy. So you can pick up the phone and go, Hey, I'm sending so-and-so over um, to help. And that goes with mental health um, services, um, any kind of academic center support center they have. If people are having, if they're struggling figuring out their major, you better believe by the time you, they get to their senior year and they've just chosen a major going into their junior year that they might not have any idea what's coming up. Yeah. And so helping people, you know, make those connections is huge. That's awesome. And Robert. Kristen, to, to, to tag on to that, it's interesting because a lot of times young professionals across campus that are full-time employees of, of whatever department it is are looking for opportunities to research and, mm -hmm. and talk about the successes they've had. And yep. I tell you what, if athletics engages career services, when it comes time for that career services national convention, they yeah. would love to engage you right. and go present together. Yeah. So yeah. again, it's altruistic. Right. So you're, you're trying to help the student, mm -hmm. but also your friends across campus, they would love to partner with you and then go talk about it on the national right. campus. Yeah, for sure. That's a great that's a great point, Robert. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we're just you know, I don't want to I think this has been so awesome already, but I know that, that there's probably maybe some conversation we want to have and discussion a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about moving on just really quickly because I think folks can, can go to our website, learn a little bit more, certainly reach out to us and learn a bit more. Um, but um, Dr. Erin Reifstek, as well as a few of her colleagues, um, really started digging into the research side of this idea of kind of this transition, right? And, and so she was looking at it really specifically related to physical activity and then also integrated some of the nutritional piece into it and then uh, also some of the mental health piece to it and developed a, a, a uh, it was a face-to-face -face and still could be face-to-face, -face, but then also um, a web-based version of moving on, um, which works with athletes and helps them to really explore their own identity as it currently stands. So um, this can be used with uh, students who are in their final semester, you know, just before graduation. But then also Aaron has worked with some institutions that they've used it for their, uh, their alumni. So the university has provided it as kind of a benefit to the alumni saying, hey, you have access to moving on and it helps them, the, the, the actual participant, the athlete, uh, explore their, what was maybe their athlete identity or maybe currently exists as athlete identity, but then also thinks about, uh, has them think about, excuse me, uh, how they will engage in physical activity a little bit differently post college uh, competition, right? And so there's like exploring different physical activity that's out there that you maybe have not been able to do because you've been committed to that one sport um, um, or it's related to nutrition and, and developing that uh, a different relationship with, with food in terms of, you know, what's being consumed and when and for what reason. And so um, I really encourage folks to, to take a look at um, some of our resources related to moving on. And if anybody is interested in exploring it any further, of course, 
reach out, ask questions. Um, we're, we're happy to help you even in just a, you know, consultation role. Like maybe you don't even, you're not even inter interested in, in getting, uh, you know, right into a program just yet, but just want to say, Hey, here's some of the things that we're thinking about, um, and, and bouncing them off some folks. Um, we're, we're certainly happy to help. Robert, do you want me, what I can do, uh, now is, um, I'll stop sharing, um, mine here and go back to there, but um, I don't know if you wanna go back to your PowerPoint or if there are some questions from folks that are on with us right now. I know some came in already, um, or, or Robert, if you have any uh, for us or anything like that. Absolutely, and again, we're, we're so fortunate to have Dr. Parks and, and Maurice West, our friend from, from Paul Quinn College uh, awesome. down there in Dallas, just absolutely thought leaders. And, and I tell you, every, every meeting I've been on with them, there's, there's something that gets talked about that, that makes you think a little bit deeper. So uh, uh, again, Dr. Parks and Maurice, as we go, if there's anything, feel free to type it in or raise your hands. Uh, I did have a few questions kind of in the back of my mind as we get through this and, and what those are, are um, what have you seen uh, both, both uh, of our guests, what have you seen be the most successful for student athletes as, as they address their shift? So, so what are, what are situations where you've seen, Oh, that really paid off for that student. Yeah. I mean, I can talk, you know, through a couple different things. Um, the, the students who seemed to figure out what they wanted to do fastest were those that were really engaged in what was happening throughout their entire experience. So the students that were engaged in the process of their education and their athletic career and the leadership opportunities or their, even their social life, even the, the students who really figured out what college was like specifically for them and what, and that they were showing up for a specific reason. Those are the ones that really probably figured out their next step. And all of those next steps have been very different. Um, some new graduate school, maybe didn't know their sophomore year, but by the time they got to their senior year, they were like, yeah, I know this is what I want to study. And they found passions and they followed those passions. Some of them were, uh, you know what? I, I need to, I need to be done for a year. I know that I have worked my butt off the past four years. I need to go do something that's going to fulfill me and fill my cup back up. And they have gone and, and taken wild jobs in Florida for a year. You know, I mean, everybody has this different path, but the ones that know that are the ones that have been really engaged in their own experience and have participated in the programming we've done or have reached out for help. The ones that kind of, that kind of just, that, that really, take an interest in themselves is really what it is. Yeah, I just, I want, I wanted to highlight, sorry, Robert, just what uh, Maurice was putting in the chat there. And I think he's just underscoring the, the, the role that career services and alumni relationship um, can, can develop for the athletes themselves. And I think that also speaks back to what you were saying earlier on, Kristen, which is sometimes it's one person shop. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you can't review all resumes, um, but you certainly can direct the students to uh, those folks that can help to review the resumes, that sort of thing, and, and prep them for their interviews, that sort of thing. Yeah. And I just want to um, talk about what you know, I agree with Maurice and then Melissa just put talking about this stuff in new student and student athlete orientation. I'm telling you, you can't talk about life after sport early enough. And coaches, sometimes that freaks them out. They're like, yeah. no, especially not to call out baseball coaches, but baseball coaches specifically. Um, <laughs> I did it. Um, you know, like they, coaches sometimes are like, oh, but I'm like, if you can get them thinking about all these things from day one, it makes them, they're able to engage and they're also able to process things, I think, better. You know, they're able to, to figure out how to balance all the things at once um, a little bit faster and easier. This, this is so helpful, and, and you touched on it earlier, uh, especially Dr. Milroy talked about the mental health aspect of things. One thing that this last year has shown all of us, both, both on the national level and then both on campus, is the importance of, of mental health maintenance mm -hmm. and um, not necessarily waiting until something is a mm -hmm. crisis, but, you know, uh, 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 
U.S. Olympian Courtney Fryericks was with us a few months ago, and she said, you know something? I go to the athletic training room yeah. every month, every day, whether I'm healthy or not. I go to the strength and the, the lifting, the, 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 the uh, you know, I visit with my strength coach every day, uh, whether mm -hmm. I'm feeling great or whether I'm not. Mm -hmm. Why haven't I done that for the last decade in terms of my mental health? So uh, what, what do you hear from student athletes or what do you see from them in terms of that uh, awakening that needs to happen whenever they transition from, hey, I was a starting whatever position you were to, boy, those, those days are behind me. Kristen, you were, you were there when, when the water's gone. Oh what, yeah. What happens? It, it's, it's devastating. You know, it's that, that feeling of what's next. There's a, there's a hole in your heart. Almost there's, there's this thing um, that you, you filled your cup up. I talk about that a lot. I, we talk about putting marbles in and taking marbles out in my leadership group. I do. And, you know, I was putting marbles in with swimming all the time. And then I felt like I, everything was empty. I didn't have any, like swimming was gone, but then you look, you keep looking down. You're like, oh my gosh, there's marbles down there. How do I get those? How do I fill up more marbles? Like I still, I still have some, so hope is not lost. Um, and I think that's what you have to like help your students realize is that it's not, it's going to be hard, but if you just look deep enough, there's something else there that you can continue to work with and continue to work through. And getting that support, I mean, we talk about breaking the stigma. We just got done last week with the Mental Health Awareness Week. You talked about the um, your not SAC, because that's what we call it. ASA. And now, ASA, yeah. So we talked about, we did that in a, in a conference level. Our equivalent ASA did a Mental Health Awareness Week. And we did it this week on purpose, because you're right before finals, you're right before a lot of championships. We need, to, we need to be able to talk about those things and talking about it. And, and actually, uh, moving on does that a really, in a really good way. It talks about the fact that, like, this might be tough. So what are you going to do? If the stress reliever in moving on is really big. A lot, of, a lot of student athletes don't even realize how much they relieve their stress through their sport until it's gone. Yeah. And then they don't have a way to, to relieve stress. And maybe you don't want to work out every day anymore. So what are you going to do to help? Maybe it's going to a counselor. Maybe it's going on walks instead of 10 mile runs if you're across country. You know, it's just figuring out how you do that. So that's a one, great question. One thing that I remind not just athletes that I've worked with, but I'm, I'm still a faculty member. So I, I teach uh, courses with juniors and seniors in it. And I say, hey, counseling, relatively speaking, can be kind of expensive when you get out of school you're paying for it right now. I don't know how all universities work, but most are the same mm -hmm. that you have counseling services that are available to you. And one thing I think that I wish I had have done as an undergrad, I took advantage of counseling when I was a graduate student, um, the university counseling services, um, it put me on a path, right? So, so starting that path post-graduation for a counseling session with a counselor, you're just getting to know and maybe just that journey. I mean, that's great. Um, but starting that journey when counseling was accessible and available to you and, and you maybe had a little bit more time then to jump in and start that journey. I think that's that was that was helpful for me is to start that journey when I had the access to it as a student. And then when I came out as a student, I was able to then maybe it was meet a new counselor and say, this is what I've been working towards. And this is the journey that I've been on this path. And, I, and, and Robert, I love how you talk about this idea of mental health maintenance um, is because we do have these peaks and valleys, regardless of how mentally healthy, quote unquote, healthy we, we think that we are, or that, that somebody says that we are, we have these ups and downs and that it's, it's, that's maintaining that level across. Right. And so starting that journey, I think is a great thing for, for athletes and, you know, our non-athletes to think about as they're in college. Well, it's it, it's interesting that you say that, Dr. Milroy, because uh, one of my one of my colleagues from a previous life uh, mentioned, you know, student athletes are used to game planning, right? So, yeah. so you watch film on your upcoming opponent, so that when they throw something at you, you're kind of familiar with it, and you're not caught off guard. Why not <laughs> engage a counselor on a regular basis right. and talk about what's about to hit you? Yeah, because when the time comes, you want to be kind of ready for it. you want to have a game plan, you want to be ready and not caught off guard. So, that's so exactly I think right. you're spot on with that. That's that's outstanding. Um, I tell you what, friends, I what I'm going to do real quick. And for those of you that are watching this after it's been recorded and sent out by the by the national office, I want to share screen real quick.
and let you know. Um, uh, Kristen, I'm going to look at you and and tell me if you if you can see this. Can you do you see the screen change? Okay. Yes. So again, uh, UNCG, uh, the Institute to Promote athlete health and wellness. And I think, uh, Dr. Miller, you might've mentioned that there was a bit of a change. Yeah, the Center for Athlete Wellbeing. It's all, it's all the same. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So again, for, for those of our friends who are watching this, please visit that website. Uh, and also please look at our friends, visit with them about prevention strategies. Uh, Shane has been absolutely wonderful for the last 17 months. Uh, trying to help us get our feet under us. And, and, and more importantly, we're in this to help student athletes because they've given their all for our institutions and for our profession. And we owe them this kind of support moving forward. So again, you'll see the names down at the bottom of the screen. Um, again, when, when I send this out as, as, a, as an attachment to our listserv to both the athletic trainers and the, the campus character liaisons, we'll be sure to stress this. This is not meant to give anyone closure and to have all the ideas tonight. This is to start a conversation with Kristen, to start a conversation with Dr. Milroy, to start a conversation with Shane and say, hey, we're thinking about next year, next academic year and, and, and currently, but especially how do we program for this? You, you've told us what we need to be aware of and we got it, but, but what do we do? What does this actually look like? Um, so again, thank you all so much. Uh, I, I do want to go around the horn one last time, uh, both Kristen and, and Dr. Milroy and Shane, if you have anything. Uh, Maurice, you're with us. Dr. Parks, you're with us. If there's any last parting thoughts before we go. Shane, you want to go? <laughs> Tenerty, you know, we've been partners with the NAI for several years now and have, have enjoyed it. Um, you know, our, our mission statement is to, to promote the, the well-being of student athletes, and that's what y'all's is as well. So it's, it's always wonderful to, uh, to work with, with folks where you align. Um, as you shared the, uh, the Prevention Strategies website, we also have athletesmovingon.org that has some specific information about the Moving On program. And as Jeff mentioned as well, please use this as a resource. Um, you know, we love to we love to brainstorm and whiteboard. And a lot of times just folks just call and say, hey, we, we got this situation and we're not sure what to do about it. And a lot of times we can help them with things that we have internally. And other times it's like, hey, you know, here's here's a resource that you'll look at that that's outside of us so you know we just we just welcome those opportunities and thank you for this one as well shane in the in the in the chat i'm going to capture all that and send it out as a as an attachment to the video did i get that right uh, moving on .org. yes i yes. believe you did absolutely yep. yes sir uh dr milroy Kristen, last thoughts Kristen. I'll go. Um, I get to work daily with Jeff and Shane, so I feel very lucky that they are in my building and I just get to run around and go see them when I need to. Um, but, and they are wealth of knowledge. I feel like because um, we have been able to work together, there are things that we have been doing that's exponentially like changed the lives of student athletes. And, um, and I think that's awesome. And I think no matter if you're in my, in my seat, if you're in a different seat, if you're a student athlete, just figuring out what that next right thing is for you. That's the, the best thing you can do. We all get to work in athletics. How cool is that? We get to be athletes. Like this is not, you know, brain surgery, but it is so much fun. And we can, we shouldn't lose sight of it because no matter what, we get to do something we love and uh, whether it's your sport or it's whatever's after that. So I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy I get to work with such awesome people. I'm just, I'm, I feel honored to be included in this, um, in this, you know, series that you have. So I really appreciate it all. Yeah. How do I, how do I follow up with that? Holy smokes that I, I, I um, likewise, I don't know. Um, but this, this has been fun to be a part of this conversation, Robert, and uh, your national office is leading the way, which is so critical um, just for uh, Kristen mentioned culture of care. Um, you're setting that stage for athletics in the NAIA, which is just absolutely incredible. So, so I, I commend you all for that. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll mention really quickly um, is that we've got the Athlete Wellbeing Network. And I know, Robert, you know a little bit about that, but not a whole lot because we've just, we've just done a kind of re-release of it. But one of the things that we'll make sure, Robert, is that 
uh, when you start sharing this out broadly, that we'll, um, we um, identify a way for your membership to become part of that network. Um, our next month actually is, is a pretty large campaign around that transition for athletes as they graduate. And we'll have different topics as we move forward. So um, I, it's just another resource and it's like, and it's, and it's something that hopefully can be a passive resource for folks and they don't have to have a lot of uh, like, you know, really in-depth commitment to, because like folks like Kristen and, and, and you, Robert, and I'm sure Maurice and, and Dr. Parks that there's a whole lot going on <laughs> and everybody doing a lot of great things. So I appreciate the NAIA. I appreciate our work that we get to do with you all, and, and especially all those that are that are listening right now that are that are serving um, our athletes out there, which is really great. So thank you. Well, well, Shane and Dr. Milroy and and Kristen and and of course our friends from within the the association, Dr. Parks and, and Maurice. Um, I'm going to close this with all the information that anyone might need as they hear us close this out. In case you didn't write it down while they were watching it. Um, we've got contact information on the bottom there. Uh, again, please keep this conversation going. It's very, very important, especially when we start thinking about what are we going to do? How are we going to program for this in the future? Uh, you've got free outstanding resources right here with you available whenever you reach out via email. Um, and again, thank you all so much for everything. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Thank right. you.